Hello, my name is Josh from Fanagram. You're watching Records in My Life on northerntransmissions.com. <laughs> childhood did uh, a sibling or uh, a parent like something one of your fondest earliest records that you really loved i grew up with the beatles playing like every day of my life um my dad is probably listening to the beatles right now <laughs> as as we speak it was that and my ma listened to a lot of classical and jazz but i'd say uh one of my earliest memories um was sitting in the back of the car my dad was driving and it's raining outside and i'm like looking at the raindrops kind of come together and on the window um and he was playing mind games by john lennon and i just thought it, it was like just had some kind of revelation just watching the water you know come together and thinking how beautiful the song was and that's one of my first memories of, I was probably like three, just being like, wow, like, life is pretty interesting. Nothing is fun, not like before, you don't get me high anymore. Was there, what's the first record you remember buying, like, you know, people steal money from their mom's purse or something like that, you know, or yeah, paper the, route? The first two albums I got, by my own choice, were um, Fear of a Black Planet by Public Enemy and Licensed to Ill by the Beastie Boys. I just, I, being a kid who grew up in the 80s and 90s, I'd wake up early in the morning and watch like Yo! MTV raps and stuff like that. And there was something about hip hop music that I really, I was really drawn to at a young age. And I used to have dreams when I was a little kid that I like I'd go to a Beastie Boy concert and they'd invite me on stage and be like the fourth member and I'd be like rapping with them and stuff um I yeah so it was that in fear of a black planet I remember I guess I didn't really understand the full message behind everything they were saying back then but I it sounded dope <laughs> yeah you know yeah. Pretty cutting edge. I mean, for the time, it was a pretty cutting edge record for what they were saying and a lot of the oh. that the message got lost, I think. Yeah. I mean, when you're, you know, like nine years old, 10 years old or whatever, you, you, you're you not really understanding a lot of uh, political issues, especially political issues that involve, you know, black lives in, in the United States, you, you know, so, but it was still really good. <laughs> really good music. Let's say you were teaching music, and, you know, kind of like in rock school. Mm -hmm. You're telling your students, this is an album you got to go home and, and listen to. And listen to. I mean, it's hard to say just one but i'd probably say go home and listen to hunky dory by david bowie that's a pretty that record kind of changed my life also okay computer by radiohead um go listen to john frusciante's solo stuff when he was like really really bad on heroin um because that there's a lot of pain and real honesty and that that I think like if I was a music teacher I would just <clears throat> encourage my students to just be honest and have integrity with their music and just have it come from a, a real honest deep place it's not about American Idol or you know the voice or 
this, that, or the other crap, or how um, how much you can shred. I mean, theory's good. It's good to be a good player, but play, uh, you know, create music that's <clears throat> that comes from the heart. Yeah, yeah. I well, when we first started really making music together, um, I Donuts came out by Jay Dilla, and I was like, Sarah and I were listening to a lot of hip hop together, a lot of everything. I was like, you got to hear this album. So I went out and bought Donuts, and we got really into Jay Dilla and a lot of Stones Throw music, uh, just that weird kind of off but on tempo loose uh almost stoner vision psychedelic sounding in a way uh hip-hop cool. Cool. yeah that was good great rap. great album well thanks so much for doing it. yeah thanks for having me man yeah i appreciate it cool yeah thanks Give me